imagine Dow Jones Newswires appears to be interviewing him and we're hearing from the CEO that there's no need to raise further capital and that they have sufficient funds to meet LNG spending needs. This after the downgrade we saw yesterday afternoon, which they say isn't their fault. It's all about the changing regulatory environment. What do you make of all of this? I guess if we have a look at Origins Business, you can really split it into two areas. One's that stable income area, and that comes from the regulated part of its business, and that's the energy assets. The other is the Australia Pacific LNG project, and this is the growth part of the portfolio. Now, if we have a look at the income part of the portfolio, it does have very strong cash flows, and this is what's ex really expected to help fund that AP LNG project. Now, we have seen a downgrade coming through from Origin Energy, but it shouldn't be a huge surprise to the market and that's because AGL Energy came out at its annual general meeting and effectively gave a downgrade and since AGL Energy is downgrade we've already seen Origin shares losing around about 4% so I think the market had some sort of expectation that we would see a downgrade coming through from Origin Energy given that uh, its energy portfolio is pretty much a regulated industry. So if we have a look at the news to the, uh, news out from Origin, underlying EBITDA was originally expected to see growth of 10%. Now they've adjusted that and they're expecting to see growth of 5 to 10 percent and that means the underlying profit expectations needs to be adjusted as well. Previously they were expecting a flat underlying profit result, now they are forecasting a fall of 5 to 10 percent. So effectively we're seeing, we've seen Origin Energy coming out with a profit downgrade and saying that profit may be down as much as 10% in the current financial year. Now there's a number of reasons for this. A key one is the Queensland uh, Competition Authority and the ruling it's made there. Now we have seen Origin applying to the judicial review um, to try and overturn uh, that decision. Uh, the South Australian decision is due at the end of the year but that's probably not as big a factor. But the other thing is the uh, regulated uncertainty in this is uh, behind some of the renewable energy uh, credits um, and the uncertainty there is probably a big reason behind the downgrade that we've seen today. So if we have a look at Origin Energy, it's already sold off around about 4% since, um, since that downgrade that we saw from AGL Energy and I guess there was a bit of a read through uh, for Origin, uh, but Origin effectively coming out to say that profit could be down as much as 10%. Also watching Goodman Group, uh, or Goodman I should say today, Julia, it's looking at Brazil and also a, a potential capital raising. Okay, Brazil's an attractive area. I think it's the world's sixth largest economy. They're hosting the World Cup in 2014 and then the Olympics in 2016. And it's an attractive market for Goodman Group because it has a fragmented uh, logistics industry and that provides an opportunity for Goodman Group to go in. They're doing that through a joint venture, a uh, 50-50 joint venture, which means there's li less risk in this than say it's American uh, JV where it has a 90% stake uh, with the US uh, counterpart having a 10% percent stake. So all up, it looks like uh, Goodman Group is l building out its global platform a lot faster than anticipated. But not only that, it's not at the risk of its balance sheet. So it is looking at a stronger capital position through this capital raising. So it's looking at raising $400 million in order to shore up its balance sheet. So 50-50 joint venture in Brazil, they've also announced some consolidation of their portfolio in Japan. Previously, it was a 50-50 joint venture with Macquarie Bank. It looks like Goodman Group's going to move to 100% of that. And then the $400 million capital raising at around about a 5% discount to uh, the, the closing price before this announcement was made. So all up, it looks like it's a positive one. Not only that, we've seen Goodman Group keeping guidance unchanged and talking about 6% growth. And this is a positive. Despite this announcement, they're keeping their growth forecast the same. And this implies that either its businesses are running stronger than expected, especially probably China or that its hedge positions that it's closed out um, has, have been a benefit to the business. So all up Goodman Group coming out with an announcement. Yes, they are having a $400 million capital raising, but this is to ensure that growth uh, in the business isn't at, at, at the, the risk of a, a poorer balance sheet. So still strengthening that balance sheet. And I think the market will like this announcement, but the capital raising of course is dilutive. So I don't think we'll see a huge reaction in terms of the share price. Looks like we are looking for some big moves at the open though today more broadly. Julia, Spy Futures pointing down 1% at this stage. Now, we have got some China data due out at 12.30, which maybe some hope might change the direction. But I do believe it's just the inflation numbers then and we're likely to get the rest later on. 
If we have a look at this week, it's been a pretty tough one for the Australian share market, in fact, global markets, but you can really split it into a week of two halves. This is the week to date so far for the ASX 200, and you can see that the first part of the week was an extremely positive one. We saw a risk on uh, sentiment in markets, and that's really as markets priced in an Obama win. But then, of course, we saw the Obama win, and then it was concentration on the fiscal cliff. It looks like that concentration on the fiscal cliff and that uh, weakness is going to continue on the Australian share market and that's because we've seen such weak offshore leads. We've seen the S&P 500 down by 1.2 percent so it's the second day of falls for the U.S. market and that's despite some better than expected economic data coming through in the U.S. We saw jobless claims falling last week to 355,000 but we did see one of the states not reporting numbers due to Hurricane Sandy but we also saw U.S. trade deficit numbers and that saw a surprise fall of 5.1 percent on month. Unfortunately the world's largest stock Apple continues to shrink we saw another fall uh, of almost four percent overnight and of course that stock in a bear market at the moment and of course then we look to the U to Europe now originally the European ministers were expected to make a decision on uh, releasing funds to Greece on the set uh, on the 12th of November. It looks like that's going to be pulled out now till the 26th of November. So some uncertainty over Greece, certainly not helping market sentiment. Having said all that, it was actually quite a positive one for commodities. We saw oil, gold, copper prices all trading higher, although we saw our majors, BHP, Rio Tinto, falling in both London as well as in US trade. But I think it's going to be a pretty difficult day for the Australian market, given the leads from the US, uh, the fact that we saw Rio and uh, BHP falling overnight, and uh, Westpac and NAV trading ex-dividend on our market.